Hello, welcome back to Raise the Wire. It's been a little while since I've done uh, a segment because I've just had a horrendous case of laryngitis and a bit of a chest infection. So, taking a week or two off, uh, at one point I could barely squeak out my own name. Uh, so if I cough or whatever, splutter a little bit, uh, I am coming out of it. Uh, Apologise for that. Uh, this is take two as well because people keep calling me during the middle and I keep forgetting to turn off all my notifications and put on Do Not Disturb. So thank you very much guys. Um, but anyway, moving swiftly onwards. Um, I'm gonna be moving away today from uh, the problems with solar winds. Uh, you know, we've talked about it a fair bit. Um, I think it's time to, to put that to, to rest for the moment. I'm sure more information will come out. There's been a little bit more information, but there's been a number of other things that, that have happened that I kind of want to cover really. Uh, one specifically for this particular segment, and I'm going to be doing another video on uh, another piece uh, which greatly interests me. Um, so watch out for that as well. I'm still here with my stolen mug. Um, I do have a new mug, which I completely forgot and left at home. Uh, it's one of these no spill, turn it upside down, keep your drink warm for four, five, six hours type. So next time you see me on this, assuming I don't forget it again, um, I, will, uh, I won't I will be using this stolen Superman mug. Um, I'll be using my own one, which no doubt Jamie will be really, really happy with. So sorry, Jamie, I've still got your mug. Mm. Anyway, coffee with Jim, that's what we're here for. This week, Monday, Tuesday, kind of broke on Tuesday, but at, um, you know, timelines can be a bit funny when it comes to security events before you hear, out, hear about them. CD Projekt Red, uh, they are the developers of Cyberpunk 277. Um, they're also sort of doing Witcher, uh, which is a, a game, well, the previous versions of the game I really enjoyed, they're doing the new version at the moment, apparently. Um, looking over at the screen, you know, they have been subject to a bit of a security incident in the form of ransomware. Seemingly, uh, some miscreants have sent them through some ransomware. Um, it ran, it encrypted everything and nicked a whole ton of data, uh, including source code for the games, up and coming games, HR material, um, internal information, that kind of thing. Now, CD Projekt Red, to their credit, have come out and said, you know, we've had this bit of an issue um, and they've issued some information as to what's happened. So basically what they've, what's happened is, is somebody's gone in, encrypted all their stuff, uh, copies of, of their data has been sent to uh, a group of malcontents who have threatened them to, to, to pay up you probably in Bitcoin, I'm guessing it is Bitcoin, um, or within sort of 48 hours have their, their all of their data released. Now, 48 hours is gone, um, so I'm still waiting to see what, what has happened from that. Um, but what I want to talk about today is ransomware. Now, ransomware has become really, really popular. A um, little while back, Normally what would happen, you'd get through something, usually via your email, to somebody who, who is a little less tech savvy. Uh, they try to open up the document, only to find it was actually ransomware, and boom, before you know it, everything, you know, all your data, everything on the network, so on and so forth has been encrypted, and you're screwed. A nice little message pops up and says, pay up or, or your data will be deleted. Uh, normally with a time limit, uh, normally with an amount that they want, uh, with a Bitcoin link to whatever wallet they're using. Um, this has been well known for a little while. Um, a little while back though, um, probably last year, maybe just a little bit before, um, people undertaking this have taken a slightly different tact. Um, and what they're doing now is they are basically ransoming you, saying, if you don't pay up, not only will you not have access to your data, but the data that we do have, that we've stolen, um, we will release to the public. Now, that's obviously a, a tactic to get you to pay up, because that's what they want you to do. They don't care if you've got backups, they don't care if you can recover, you know. What they really, really want is you to pay up 
or, or you know your dirty laundry and the various internal documentation that you have is going to be released online. Um, we don't know how successful those attacks are because quite often, obviously, you know, people don't own up to the fact that they've had that. Um, but there's been quite a few incidents uh, where this has cropped up and, and CD Projekt Red have been the latest on that. Um, to their credit, as I said, you know, they came out and they've, they, they've said that this has happened. Um, but, you know, it just kind of goes to show, really, that, that security, and I keep saying, I am a security person, but, you know, it, it's so important to get right. If you're an organisation of any size, really, you know, it doesn't need to be expensive, it just needs to be effective. Now, maybe some people will be rolling their eyes because they hear me say that a lot. But, you know, you can't afford to have security incidents, really, as an organisation. Because if you do, and you have something like this, it can really adversely affect your business. So it's best to try to do everything in your power to not have this happen. Because this is only going to increase. You know, um, there have been reports of legal entities that have had this happen. Obviously, we've heard of, sort of various healthcare companies um, and organisations that have had this happen, software development. You know, the... the there's been a, a distinct increase in security attacks. Now, I've written articles in the past where we've kind of gone over why this happens. You know, there's a lot of people out there at the moment who are furloughed. There are a lot of people out there at the moment who are out of work. Um, there's a lot of people who are, are, you know, really hurting with this pandemic uh, and they're not getting the money in. So those with very much more looser morals than most could potentially be turning to this kind of thing in order to get enough money for them to survive, for them to pay for food for their kids, to pay their mortgages, to pay their rent. And they take the risk of being caught. But ultimately, you know, this kind of attack is, is definitely on the rise for whatever reason. And we have to start looking at this objectively. Um, the world has dramatically changed. Um, We've gone from, from all sitting in offices and having a very centralised security view to being very distributed, uh, reliant on cloud services, reliant on, on you know, connections from insecure networks, you know, your home network where you've got your home router, you know, everybody is working from that space at the moment. And what that does is that pushes out that attack, potential attack perimeter quite widely compared to what it was before. And you've heard, heard me talk about this in the past. And it's distinctly an issue, because if you do get something like this, there's a much, much higher chance that it's gonna work. Um, because you don't have the security baseline that you, you, that, that you had before. Um, I mean, this is the second year now where this pandemic has been, you know, kicking our ass, you know, um, quite a bit. Um, and we need to start addressing this. We need to start reviewing how we're handling our security in a, in a world where everybody's working from home. You know, once this is all done, whenever that may be, and we get back to, to normality, I don't think this is gonna change. I think there's gonna be a lot more people who've seen the benefit of working from home, a lot more organizations who've seen a much bigger benefit from, from not having the big corporate offices that cost them God knows how much every year to maintain when they can have a distributed workforce. You know, the, the, the employees are a lot happier because they can spend a bit more time at home and they don't have to spend any time or as much time commuting. Um, corporate costs come down because of the, the, the less need to cater for people in an office. And there can be some real good benefits from a distributed workforce. But from a security standpoint, it makes things a lot tougher. Um, Back in the day, you know, if there was a security event, somebody could come up to your desk and say, oh, Jim, you know, or whoever you may be, or security person, I've, I've seen this. Um, I think I might have a, had a bit of a problem. Can you help me out? Um, now you can't do that. You know, you're reliant on people calling you up and telling you about things that may or may not have happened. Um, you know, I've been talking to a number of security people and they've said, you know, 
quite often um, they would go to meetings and somebody would mention a project or something that they were, you know, the security people weren't aware of and saying, oh, uh, yeah, you know, we will need to get security involved in this. You know, that's not happening anymore. So there's a lot more holes in the uh, security as, as a business evolves because, you know, people don't always want to include security people in the conversations for new innovations, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why they don't. But if they don't include security in it, you just end up with problems like the one that, that CD Projekt Red have experienced. Um, we, we don't know the details of how it got in or anything at the moment, but you know, let's face it, they've got a lot of staff, a lot of those staff will be working from home. Um, who knows how it got into the system, but yeah, it's probably through uh, somebody opening something they shouldn't have and, and then boom, you know, before you know it, you're, <laughs> you're getting ransomed. Um, you know, pay up or you lose your data and we'll release, we'll re wait, you won't lose your data because we'll release it online. You can get your data, your own data back if you want, but it'll be online and everybody will know everything about your staff. You know, you'll end up with GDPR issues, you'll end up with all kinds of, of, of other problems as well. You know, people get access to your code. There's a whole host of problems for a company like Project Red, um, you know, if you're in that space. And if you, you know, I've spoken to a number of people who are in the gaming space. Now, the gaming space is a funny one. I've, I've been a gamer for most of my life. You know, I like my online games. I like playing games in the very little time that I have when I'm not being a, a dad and not being a business owner to kind of just sit down and just, I don't know, shoot a few digital people or take over the universe in, in you know, it's a bit of entertainment. Um, and it's a very big sector of business is becoming more and more popular. I mean, we're not really producing much in the way of films at the moment because of everything. So a lot of people are playing a lot of games. You know, what else have you got to do? If you're furloughed, you've got nothing to do and you've got no kids and you're sat at home, well, you know, play some games. Uh, you know, you could watch a few old films or whatever. There's very few new ones coming out. Um, so a lot of people play games. So there's a lot of money in that industry. And because there's a lot of money in that industry, you know, criminals tend to follow that. So there's every possibility. I mean, the worrying trend here really is there's a lot more development companies that seemingly are under attack. And I did say I wasn't going to mention SolarWinds, but there's a number of security firms have been under attack. I mean, allegedly that's, that's from state-sponsored hackers. Uh, it may well be, it may well not be, but you know we do know that ransomware is rapidly on the rise. I've spoken to a number of people, um, you know, in the industry, and 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 they've remarked that it's it's getting way out of hand. Um, and we we you know companies, especially if you're a development company, please 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 just buff your security up. Just look objectively at it. Get access to an infosec person who can sit down and kind of go over your environment, how you're working at the moment, and, and provide you with advisories and, and recommendations on how to protect yourself from just this kind of thing. Because something like this, or something like the solar winds hack, is really gonna have a serious effect to your business. You know, business partners will start getting a bit worried about working with you. Um, those using your software, if you're a development firm who develops kind of network monitoring software or, you know, key infrastructure software, key applications, that kind of thing, you know, they're, they're going to stop using your products if you have an event like this. Um, okay, you know, in the gaming development world, it's more really about your crown jewels being put out on the internet for your competitors to see, you know, um, for your key data to be released um, to the general public on on you know performance reviews on your employees your your you know roadmaps for your for your games you know games that you're working on that you may not have put out to to you know social media yet you know that you you're holding back on before your marketing so you can get to a, to a, to a good space in it you know please just take it seriously again 
I've spoken to a number of people who work in the gaming industry. I spoke to one particular CISO uh, for, for one firm um, just before all this pandemic kicked off. And, and he was saying to me that the gaming industry, security really isn't on their radar, um, and it should be. Um, he'd just been let go from his position uh, because basically his employer, by the sounds of it, had decided that, you know, security could be handled appropriately by the IT department. They didn't need a, a, a full InfoSec person who could kind of n help them navigate through the world of InfoSec and they could rely on, on a group of techies to do it. And there's a lot of good techies out there. I'm not saying that techies aren't good at security. There's a lot of very good techies I know who are great at security. But security isn't just about a product. It's not just about the technology. There's also governance aspects there. There's also security awareness aspects there. DevSecOps is another big one for development firms. Uh, you know, there are organizations out there that don't really care about it, who develop all kinds of technology and applications. You've got to start taking it seriously. If you don't take it seriously, just look at what's been going on in the industry and look at some of your competitors and some of the other organizations who are in your space who've been affected by, you know, security attacks or ransomware. You, do you want to be the next ones? Probably not. So do something about it. Get the right advice. Do you know? Do your due diligence. Bring yourself up to a, to as a secure an, an environment as you feel comfortable being in. And listen to security people. That's why we're here. You know, a lot of people view infosec people as the, you know, the harbingers of doom. We aren't that. Okay, some of us may be that, but not all of us are. You know, some of us look very objectively at security. We're there to protect you and your organization, the assets that it has. We're not there to annoy you or piss you off. We're there to, to, to properly help out. So utilize us. You know, sit down, have a chat with us. If you want to talk about it, give me a shout. I'm always happy to talk to anybody about anything related to security. Um, get in touch, uh, but take it seriously, because if you don't, It could get bad. Okay. Anyway, hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. I managed to get through this without coughing, although I feel a bit of a tickle in the throat, so I'm going to stop there. Um, please feel free to subscribe, press the little bell notification, leave a comment. It's great for the algorithm. It allows us to get out there a little bit more. Um, I've got a number of people who've asked a number of questions. I'm probably going to wait for a few more before I go into those and do a, a, a video on those. We've got a number of interviews coming up as well. There are some that were waiting to be released. We've got some new interviews with some, some interesting people um, that I'm doing next week. Um, so look out for those to be released. But for the moment, thank you very much. Look after yourselves, people. Um, and if you need us, you know where we are. Please feel free to get into contact with us um, and I look forward to doing more videos and speaking to you soon. See you later. Goodbye.